Chinese New Year parade begins in Chim Sa Choi in about half an hour. Residents and tourists flock to Wang Tai Sen Temple for New Year blessings. German Chancellor criticizes Vladimir Putin's Tucker Carlson interview. Hello and welcome to TVB News. Today is the first day of the Chinese New Year. TVB wishes you a happy and healthy Year of the Dragon. And the Chinese New Year Night Parade is making a comeback at 8 this evening in Chim Sa Choi after a four-year hiatus. Many residents and tourists arrived at the area this afternoon to secure the best spots to watch the New Year spectacle. Timothy Lee has our top story. Before the floats have even arrived, residents and tourists alike have already crowded the streets in Chim Sha Choi. Starting mid-afternoon, many people began taking up the best spots to view the parade on both sides of Canton Road. This boy said he came to cheer for his younger sister, who is part of the performance. This woman says she never watched the parades before and wished to experience the festive mood. This mainland tourist said she wanted to bring her children to see the event, as such parades are not available in the mainland. Happy New Year! Earlier, performers coming from both the city and around the world made last-minute preparations before the long-awaited parade tonight. A U.S. cheerleading team sending their wishes through this upbeat dance. The Filipino team went with a more traditional route with colorful theatrical outfits. This as the Japanese delegation added a comedic element to the event with popular female dance group Avangardi. The parade will consist of nine floats in total. Close to 30 teams of performers from the SAR, the mainland and abroad have participated in the program. Starting at the Hong Kong Cultural Center, the parade will travel through Middle Road as well as Haiphong Road before ending outside Sheraton Hotel. Timothy Lee, TVB News. A baby boy and girl were born just as the city entered the first day of the Lunar New Year. The two became the first dragon babies in the Year of the Dragon. Mimo Sengai reports. This baby boy was born at midnight at the Chinese University's medical center in Sha Tin, making him the first male baby to arrive in the Lunar New Year. The boy named Miles, just weighs over three kilograms, is the second child of the Chan family. <laughs> Miles' sister was excited to welcome her baby brother. How happy? Just a little bit? Super happy. <laughs> Mrs. Chan said they did not plan to give birth to a dragon boy. We didn't expect um, when baby would arrive. We never planned it. Um, throughout the whole process, we assumed it was, you know, it was a totally natural birth. So it just happened that yesterday I needed, to, you know, it started showing, and then there were some symptoms and some signs, and then went to the doctors. The mother added her wish for the child. Whatever the Chinese zodiac is for the baby, as long as baby's healthy, they grow. I think that's all, and like being happy is most important. A dragon baby girl was also born at a stroke of midnight at St. Teresa's Hospital. The baby is the first child of the Fu family. The parents hope their daughter can grow up happily and healthy. Meanwhile, on the first day of the Chinese New Year, many residents decided to visit Lam Chun in Taipo. Speaking of Lam Chun, the wishing tree is a must-visit site where individuals can throw a fortune card onto the tree. People believe if the fortune card does not fall from the tree, the wish will come true. Chief Secretary for Administration Eric Chan also appeared at Lam Chun to attend a well-wishing festival lighting ceremony. Visitors can buy hot food and souvenirs from 19 stores there. News 9, TVB News. In line with tradition, many people flock to Wang Tai Sen Temple today, including tourists. This long queue of people were all heading in the same destination, the Wang Tai Sen Temple. A sign had to be put up to direct the flow of people. It is a Chinese New Year tradition for worshippers to burn incense sticks at the temple. Worshippers believe they will receive the greatest blessings if they are the first to enter the temple and burn an incense stick. A Danish tourist was also attracted by the tradition. 
we want to take part of the celebrations of Chinese Year as we're visiting Hong Kong. With this Lunar New Year marking the Year of the Dragon, the mythological creature has long been celebrated as an auspicious symbol in Chinese culture. Timothy Lee tells us more about how the legend of the dragon also played a role in the history of Hong Kong. Chinese communities around the world traditionally wish each other good health, energy and vigor like a dragon. But what do people think a dragon looks like? This woman believes dragons are strong, beautiful, and have colorful bodies. While this woman said the mythical creatures are fierce, adding they can roam freely in the sky. With a recorded history dating back to the Neolithic period between 5,000 to 8,000 years ago, the earliest appearance of dragons were etched into jade and pottery. These ancient designs were minimalistic, featuring only the dragon's head and a simple C-shape for the body. The design of the creature only became more complex by the Han Dynasty, when images of the dragon included elements of other animals, such as antlers and fish scales. <laughs> Professor Tsai Zhongqi from Lingnan University's Department of Chinese noted the dragon was seen as the king of all creation in ancient times. That is why art depicting dragons combined different parts of animals to emphasize its uniqueness. The ancient Chinese culture specialists added the creature was believed to be able to control the weather and bring good fortune, and that many Chinese people gradually came to worship it. Legend also tell us how the story of the dragon is related to Hong Kong, such as how the region of Kowloon, which means nine dragons in Chinese, got its name. One explanation says it was named after a stretch of nine hills shaped like a dragon starting from Kowloon Peak to Piper's Hill from east to west. While Tsai noted another etymology provided by locals, who recounted how the last emperor of the Song dynasty, Zhao Bing, remarked the eight hills he saw in the area resembled eight dragons, when people beside him said it should be nine dragons if the emperor himself is counted. The professor of Chinese culture stressed no matter what the real explanation is, Hong Kong has always been seen as a land of prosperity and distinguished individuals. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Overseas, U.S. President Joe Biden used a meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to put pressure on Congress to pass a multi-billion dollar aid package for Ukraine, Israel and other allies. Republicans are trying to block the bill, which was taken to the next step during a vote on Friday, but is facing opposition from some Republican lawmakers. Biden described as criminal neglect any attempt to block the bill, which includes around 60 billion U.S. dollars for Ukraine. Meanwhile, Schultz described Russian President Vladimir Putin's recent interview with U.S. journalist Tucker, Tucker Carlson as ridiculous, saying Putin's war against Ukraine is merely a land grab. Nazvi Karim with more. A meeting of two leaders with contrasting success on Ukraine aid. U.S. President Joe Biden is frustrated at the slow progress Congress is making in approving a 95 billion U.S. dollar overseas aid package that includes 60 billion for Ukraine. It comes three days after German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and his government approved a new military package for Kiev that would send more than 100 Leopard 2 main battle tanks and other assets to the eastern battlefields. At the Oval Office, Biden pulled no punches in urging Congress to pass the bill. The failure. The United States Congress, if it occurs, not to support Ukraine is close to criminal neglect. It is outrageous. Kissinger was right when he said not since Napoleon has Europe not looked over his shoulder and worried about Russia until now. You and I helped put NATO together in a way it hadn't been in a long time. So much is at stake, so they better step up. Senators conducted a late-night vote on Friday, voting 64 to 19, with 14 Republicans joining Democrats in advancing the bill to the next step. Even if the foreign aid package gets off the ground in the Senate with possible Sunday voting, the package still faces a deeply uncertain future in the House, which has a Republican majority largely hostile to more Ukraine aid. Schultz earlier said he hoped Congress would back U.S. support for Ukraine. So I'm very happy that in Europe we made now decisions to give the necessary financial support to the budget. And hopefully uh, the Congress, will, the House will follow you and uh, make a decision on giving the necessary support. And uh, 
when we saw this ridiculous interview Putin gave shortly, we understand that he is always telling a lot of lies about the history of this war, because it's so easy to understand why he's doing it. He wants to get part of the territory of his neighbors. Just imperialism, imperialism and... Nazri Karim, TVB News. Hundreds of thousands of displaced Palestinians are fear fearful of Israel's impending offensive in the southern region of Rafah. More than 1.5 million people are sheltering in Rafah, deemed the last safe place in Gaza after being asked to evacuate from other areas because of Israeli military activity. Now, the Israeli military wants them to evacuate Rafah as they seek out the remaining Hamas battalions. This woman is internally displaced from north of Gaza and says she has nowhere else to go. She said she told her husband she would rather stay in Rafah and die than move again. More than half of Gaza's population are in Rafah with fears that Israel may force them into Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, something Cairo has vowed to prevent. United Nations officials warn that an attack on Rafah would be catastrophic. The United States has said it opposes an attack on Rafah unless provisions are made for its population. Dozens of people were killed in a strike on Rafah on Saturday. Still ahead, controversy over Joe Biden's ability to remember things continues. Shooting incident in New York Times Square. Welcome back. U.S. President Joe Biden is fighting back after being described by the special counsel as having a poor memory. This after Biden made mistakes in naming world leaders, even referring to meeting with a dead French president. NBC with this report. Tonight, President Biden ignoring questions about that explosive special counsel report after last night disputing the report's conclusion that he willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency. These assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. Special counsel Robert Hur found no criminal charges are warranted. Today, the White House slamming Hur's report, comparing it to the Justice Department's classified documents investigation of former Vice President Mike Pence. It was a brief one-page letter to Mike Pence. But in this case, there was a 15-month investigation. He reached the inevitable conclusion based on the facts and the evidence that there was no case here. Justice Department officials tell NBC News her included damaging details referring to what he called the president's diminished faculties and faulty memory because that was a key reason her did not recommend charges, arguing a jury would be unlikely to convict because President Biden would present himself as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning and I'm an elderly man and I know what the hell I'm doing. At that hastily called news conference. My memory is fine. The president became most heated singling out scathing details in the report that during his interview, Mr. Biden did not remember when he was vice president and that he did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. I don't need anyone remind me when he passed away. But moments later, reigniting questions about his memory, referring to the president of Egypt as the president of Mexico when talking about the crisis in Gaza. The president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. It's the latest in a series of flubs just this week, saying he recently spoke with French President Mitterrand, who died decades ago. Mitterrand from Germany, I mean, from France, looked at me and said, uh, said, you know, why, why how, how long are you back for? And appearing to forget the name of Hamas until a reporter said it. There's been a response from the, uh, the, the there's been a response from the opposition, but, um, it, it, yes, I'm sorry, from Hamas. 
The White House says President Biden is not the only political leader who misspeaks and rejects the report's characterization of the president's memory. We do not believe that part of the report lives in reality. The vice president is also slamming the special counsel. The president's demeanor in that report was characterized, could not be more wrong on the facts, and clearly politically motivated. Our latest NBC News poll shows voter concerns with both President Biden and Republican frontrunner Donald Trump, who recently confused Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi, speaking about January 6th. Like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. 76% of Americans have major or moderate concerns about the president's mental and physical health. 48% have those same concerns about Mr. Trump. In New York, a 15-year-old suspected shoplifter is accused of shooting a Brazilian tourist in Times Square when asked for a receipt by staff. The 38-year-old woman was shot in the leg and will survive. The teenager, who was also said to have shot at a police officer while fleeing the scene, was arrested on the outskirts of the city 24 hours later. The suspect, who is described as a Venezuelan migrant, fired a weapon when confronted by a security guard. The bullet missed the guard but grazed a tourist queuing to buy trainers. The police commissioner said it was a miracle no one was seriously injured. That officer's partner continues to pursue the shooter, and as the, sh as the shooter turns and apparently fires at our uniformed officer, not once, but on two different occasions, our uniformed officer was, was not struck, so fortunately, and did not return fire. Why? Because that officer was well aware of the danger that firing that gun in a crowded, busy street could potentially inflict. And finally, away from Hong Kong, the Year of the Dragon has been heralded in China, Asia, and the rest of the world. David Garrett starts our look at celebrations in the capital, Beijing. Blue skies, but freezing temperatures for the first day of the Year of the Dragon. A dragon dance could not be more appropriate. With temperatures plummeting to minus 6 degrees Celsius, these hardy souls celebrated the Lunar New Year by participating in or just watching traditional performances at the capital's Taoist Dongyue Temple. Baton twirling was another way to keep warm. People touched the bronze statue of a donkey for good luck. It was the first time Beijing had seen large-scale performances and gatherings like this on the first day of the Lunar New Year for four years because of pandemic restrictions. This man got a round of applause for balancing this huge decorative pole on his hand, his shoulder and even his lip. On Chinese New Year's Eve last night, a billion people tuned in for China Media Group Spring Festival Gala. The TV extravaganza is recognised as the most watched annual TV event on the planet and is beamed worldwide. The show mostly came out of Beijing, but also featured performances from Shenyang, Xi'an, Kashgar and Changsha. Hundreds of artists from across China performed and some foreigners too. For the first time, online audiences were able to watch performances from multiple angles in a new innovation this year. There were nods to the younger generation with pop music performances and comedy skits. The show counted down to midnight and the start of a Lunar New Year. This was followed by a spectacular made-for-TV fireworks display. Across the Taiwan Strait this morning, thousands came together in Taipei as worshippers prayed at this historical temple, which people have been visiting for over 200 years. They're hoping for good fortune, health and prosperity. They also burnt incense sticks and brought offerings. Earlier, a member of staff rang the bell of the temple 108 times as a traditional symbol of peace and prosperity. Colourful scenes in Malaysia at the Dongzhen Temple, Slangar, last night. The gardens beautifully lit up with images of dragons as well as lanterns shining bright. Some went to temples to pray while others enjoyed just strolling around and soaking up the atmosphere. 
Even as far away as Peru, there were joyous celebrations. An estimated three million Chinese descendants live here. The Chinese community and others participated in dragon dances, while other locals filmed the moment on their mobiles and wished each other a happy new year of the dragon. David Garrett, TVB News. Have a wonderful weekend. Kung Hei Fat Choi from all of us here at TVB Pearl. Bye for now.